Sometimes you get the feeling that I don't belong here. I mean, I'm here on the ship, surrounded by all these veterans. And I'm terrified that someone will notice me and say I'm on the wrong ship. I keep having this weird dream that I'm in a room full of people with green skin. And they just watch me, wondering what I'm doing there. And then one of the green people turns around and he's my father. Does that distress you? Not really. Although I do feel kind of embarrassed. What do you think, John? What do I think? William, I think you're just letting things get on top of you. I mean, ship's physician on an exploratory scout ship, that's a pretty heavy first posting. No one expects you to do anything other than your job. Huh. I suppose you're right. I am a counselor. I'm always right. Heh. <laughs> well, sorry to have barging on you like that. Oh, don't worry. And that's what I'm here for. I'd better get back to sick bay. Thanks, John. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my new Let's Play of Seven Days of Skeptic. Yeah, there's no title screen or anything like that, so I kind of just had to do a cold open. But anyways, this is a game, this is a sequel to a game I played a while back called Five Days a Stranger. Now, if you have not watched my Let's Play of Five Days a Stranger, I invite you to do so now so that things in this game will make more sense. And yes, this is indeed the sequel. It's not uh, six days that's the sequel. Seven days is the one that immediately follows five days. And there are two more games after this one. But we're coming to this one. It kind of uh, jumps to the future, as we can see. How this is going to be relevant to the last game? Well, you're just going to have to find out. Now, these games, they're relatively new. They're indie, and they are free to download. So, if you want to play along, go ahead and download the game and play along. It's a fun one. It's a scary one. It is my next game for my creepy October lineup. Now let's take a look around. We have our certificates here. My diploma in human psychology and my license to practice in an in a closed spaceship environment. By the way, that dream that guy was having, uh kind of remember what it was about. It's not it's not gonna be any kind of issue until way late in the game, but uh just uh, pay attention to it. I'll uh, bring it up when the time comes. My desk containing all the files on the crew and their mental well-being. And the seats that came with the room. Let's look out the window. I'm sure gazing into space was amazing for the first people to leave Earth, but for me it's now getting a little samey. <laughs> I thought that with me from the share house, I'll, I lived a while at college. Wait, I brought it that with me from the share house I lived a, and while at college. It's a bit too small for people to lie down on, but it's the thought that counts. <laughs> so yeah, basically if you want to interact, uh, pressing something I think is just sort of the uh, context sensitive default thing, like if there's an item you just left click and pick it up. But if you right click you get a few options, hands, mouth, keycard. I try to use my mouth on something, it won't reply. So that's only for talking. This isn't uh, an inventory item and key card. So yeah, this isn't uh, full throttle. You can't put your mouth on something to actually put your mouth on it. So, put our hand on the door. This is a shipwide announcement. All personnel report to the conference room in the ops desk. On the ops deck. By order of Captain Chahal. Oh, hey, John. Adam. What's this all about? Beats me. Maybe someone died. Let's hope not. Right then, boys and girls. Sit in. I have a little announcement to make. Something we think you should all know about. I thought you were already married. Yes, yes, very witty. Fact is, the scanners have picked up something floating in open space. Something manufactured. 
said Ina. Thank you, Captain. If I could draw your attention to the tabletop. The object is constructed of a metallic alloy and seems to be rectangular in shape. Oh, wow. First contact. Let's not get too excited. It's more likely to be a human artifact left adrift for a long time. What else do we know about it? It seems to be some kind of container. The right sort of size to be cryonic escape pod. Sensors don't show any life signs inside it, though. Did you inform High Command? Yes, sir. They recommended we drop a beacon and leave it for a fully equipped research vessel. Just a recommendation, not a direct order? Well, yes, sir, but... Adam, using the grappling claw to... Use the grappling claw to bring it into the cargo bay. It'll be in range for the next few hours. Right out, Chief. Okay, everyone else can go back to what they were doing. We'll let you know if we need anything... Uh, any of you for anything. Just a minute, John. What do you think of this? I guess I don't won't know what to think till it's brought in. Yes, yes, quite. You know I'm going to need you there when we're examining it. Uh, no, I didn't know that. Come on, John, it's a basic procedure. You should know this. This is potentially a first contact scenario. Regulations say qualified psychologists must be at hand for the first contact scenarios. Okay, sure, but I'm not sure what you said be. You really need to stop de depreciating yourself. Adam should be done bringing it in soon. Stop by my quarters for a chat if you like. Help pass the time. Um... Alright, so it seems there's some sort of cool little container that we found could be first contact with alien life. Ooh. Bridge. We have a map here. So we're right there and we have all these different rooms. So this can uh, get kind of mazy, confusing at times. But I believe that we will uh, get used to everything soon enough. Do notice that this is the operations deck. So we can open the door and talk to Serena. That's Ensign Serena Langley, the Hel Helmswoman. Can we touch her? I'm just going to pretend you didn't suggest that. <laughs> Serena. Oh, hello, Dr. Somerset. Enjoying your work? Oh, yes, thanks. Is this your first posting? No, I was on a cargo transport before this. This must be a bit of a change of pace. Yep. What do you think of this alien artifact business? Personally, I don't think it'll turn out to be much. It's the captain's attitude that surprises me. He completely ignored a recommendation from high command. I know he'd feel if, how he'd feel if I ignored one of his suggestions. Overjoyed, probably. What? Nothing. <laughs> uh, what do you think of the captain? He's a nice person, but confidentially he seems a bit unprofessional. Why is that? Well, he gets agitated when I call him Sir. He keeps asking me to call him Barry. It's not what a captain should be like. Is that console as complicated as it looks? Not to me, but then I spent four years learning how to use it. I see. Nothing you'd like to talk to me about? I th if I think of something, I know where your office is. Of course. Well, I'll see you around. Bye. Alright, good chat, uh, Miss Serena. And let's see, what's this? Panel for the door to the captain's quarters with a keycard slot and a doorbell. Alright, let's uh, ring the doorbell. Who is it? It's John Barry. Ah, John, do come in. What's on your mind? 
Do you need me yet? No, not yet. We'll pay you when you're ready. Why don't you catch up on some work in your office while you're waiting? What do you think the object will be? I don't want to make any assumptions yet. Personally, I hope it will be an alien artifact. But really, I'm expecting it not to be. Pessimism is a sensible attitude. That way, you can't get disappointed. Hey, <laughs> yeah. I'm concerned about one of the crew. Oh? Who? Serena seems so standoffish. You notice that too. She just goes by the rule book. That's her problem. And you don't? John, I have this theory. Old captains don't get retired because we're old and infirm. We get retired because we realize that the rules could do with a few changes. I see. Angela doesn't have any sense of fun at all. She was educated at the Ganymede University of Science. They like to teach people that logic is the only way of life. That's why I need her as first mate, really. Sometimes a logical viewpoint is what you need the most. William seems to think he's out of his depth. Hell, he didn't we all on our first posting? Remember my, I remember mine. Helsman on the EFZ. I was expecting the captain to turn around and bite my face off every minute of every day. William will be alright soon. Adam acts so facetious sometimes. Hey, someone has to. A spaceship is an enclosed environment and sometimes tempers get a little strained. If a crew needs someone like him to lighten the mood. And he's a fine engineer too. You're his bunkmate, you know him better than me. I guess. Actually, I wonder what they think of me. The ship's counselor is paranoid? Physician, heal thyself. <laughs> Seriously, they must think you're doing your job right. They won't keep to talking to you if you weren't. Thanks. Never mind. Anything else you want to discuss with me? Could you remind me what our mission is? Is playing dumb one of your psychological mind games? We're mapping out the Cardicus Galaxy, you know that. Think we'll find anything interesting? Sure, if you're a geologist. How are you feeling? Hell, I'm always content, you know that. You're retiring this post, right? After this post, right? God, don't remind me. My command has have done so constantly over the last few months. I could have wished for a slightly more memorable final mission. Let's just see what the future holds. Well, I should get back to work. Drop in any time you want to talk. It's not like I have much else to do. Alright, that was fun. Let's check. Let's see. What is this door lead? I don't see anything interesting. It looks like these are escape hatches. By the way, if you want to save the game, you can, because you can die in this game. I don't think you can quite yet, but, uh, well, we'll see. So, you just press this and you can save the game. That's the exit game, and that's just to check what things do. By the way, does anybody recognize that first bit of music that we heard? I know it's a piece by Yanni, and it's a piece I really like, but, uh, I can never remember what it's called, so... If you know, let me know in the comments. Anyway panel for the escape pod. Let's use it. Just seeing an escape pod without due cause is a court martial offense. Oh, uh, yeah, nothing we can uh, do here. I guess it's good to know that they're here, but uh, it's not like we'll ever need them, will we? Alright, um, before we go in there, let's Check out what else there is to see on this floor. Oh, nothing else. Absolutely nothing else. It's a table. It's a conference table with built-in tabletop plasma screen. All 
Alright, let's take the elevator. See, um, office deck, residence, communal deck. Go to observation. Ah, oh, there's Angela. So notice that this is the observation deck. Oh, and there's the map again. Okay. So all the way on top. So I think where we were before was operations. Lieutenant Commander Angela Garrett is the first mate. Well, let's give her a British accent. Why not? I, I'm not good with my f female voices, so let's do something to set her apart <laughs> from uh, the other girl. Angela, Dr. Somerset, how can I help you? Do you come here often? Usually once a day, generally before bed. I like to have a little moment to myself. Uh, yes. What do you think this object will turn out to be? Probably nothing but miscellaneous space debris. I agree with the captain's actions with regard to it. Better we find out this is unimportant before wasting large research ships' time. I don't even know what accent I'm going for with her. <laughs> Keep slipping into the other uh, Indian accent. Okay, so what do you want this object to be? I want it to be nothing important. Federation reports say that there's no life in the Caracas galaxy. If this proves correct, we won't have to update all our records. That's a very practical attitude. Thank you, Doctor. Nice view, isn't it? I thought so once. But now I've spent so much time in space, it loses its wonder. Now I see nothing but clusters of red giants, binary systems, nebulaic dust. Right. How are you feeling? I'm quite well at the moment, thank you for asking. No problems that require your professional attention. Jolly good. <laughs> oh, I guess it's good I did a British accent. Even though I think they're all supposed to be British, because I think this is a, uh... This game was made by a Brit. But, uh, you know, whatever. Suppose I should be off about my business. Until later, then. Alright, good talk. Yeah, when we get back to uh, Trilby... Of course, he'll have to have a British accent because he's definitely British. But we'll get there when we get there. So, there's already the observation deck. I believe the obs deck is where we came from. So, let's go to the communal deck. Games room. combination of holographic and force field technology, this table can simulate snooker, table tennis, subutio, pretty much anything. The heck is snooker and subutio? It's no fun to play on my own. Are we playing the machine? I'm sure there are better things I could be doing. Ah, I love this game, but I can never work out what to do with a disembodied brain in a jar. <laughs> Alright, I wonder if that's referencing something. Should be brilliant at this if we had any darts. Yeah, and in any room to actually throw them, you'd have to throw them over this table. Some works of popular fiction for those with no sense of fun and some board games. No sense of fun? I love books. Alright, let's go through the store. Hey, it's William. William Taylor, the rookie ship's physician. <laughs> I did try to touch everybody, sorry. William? Oh, hello, John. How are you feeling now? Better, I think. Talking to you helped. Oh, sorry. I would like to come and talk again in the future. Sure, just come track me down. That's what I'm here for. What do you think of this alien object? To be honest, I'm not that bothered. I'm just the position. It won't matter to me unless someone injures themselves on it. 
What are you doing there? Just reading some scientific papers someone sent me. It's incredible what they can do with nanites these days. Over my head, I'm afraid. I'd better get back to work. See you later. Hmm, can we get into the cabinet? Get ourselves some uh, happy medicine. Get them full of medical supplies. William has the only key. No. Oh, never mind. Guess that's not important. And, uh, oh, this is where I have my office. Alright. So let's explore a little bit more. Let's see. We have a residence deck. Notes that this is the residential deck. All right. Tech Commander Angela Garrett, Ensign Serena Langley. All right, that's the uh, two girls' room. Doctor William Taylor gets his own room. Great. Lieutenant Adam Gilkeny, Doctor Jonathan Somerset. That's me. Oh. So we can use our key card and get inside. Electronically locked storage locker. Requires a key card. All right. Books. This is one of my old psychology textbooks I like to refer to now and then. All right. Some spare clothing. Since the invention of dirt repellent fabric, nobody needs more than two outfits. All right. Anything in the desk? Much better equipped desk in my office. Good talk. All right. Can we go to the bathroom? I don't need to right now. All right. Let's see what's through here. Okay, this is the mess hall. I don't need that quite yet. So let's go to the engine deck. Jeez, this place is noisy. Is this a... Oh, it's a... Uh, containment center. What are these things called? Break. There we go. I think it controls the break force field. So, just in case somebody does something horrible, hopefully we'll not have to uh, ever use that on this journey. Reactor core. Reliably informed that this is what keeps the ship ticking over. And it's a railing. Oh, this is the cargo bay. This is where they're going to pick up the thingamabob. Cargo bay doors open to allow incoming shuttles and anything that might have been picked up by the external grappling claws. Which is what it will be doing soon. Uh, it doesn't seem like I can go to the right anymore. Can I use this door? I'm not allowed in there. All right. Another good talk. So, jeez, what time am I at? I don't even know. Let's go back to the residence deck. to prevent people like me from ruining the ship. Oh, that's just a map. We have a dispenser here. Counter. There's a counter you sit at while eating. The seats are close together to encourage sociability. I'm not hungry at the moment. Well, alright. So, I think I will end it off here. I just did a little bit of exploring of the ship. But what could that weird metal object out in space be? I guess we'll just have to find out next time on Let's Play 7 Days a Skeptic. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.